Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong, and welcome to the back office. A little bit of a special one today. I have been to a car boot sale and I've picked this up. This is an Amstrad e-mailer, and this is the E3. I think this is the last model they made before they uh, packed it all in and decided people really didn't want to buy these anymore. Um, and I got this at a car boot sale today for the grand total of one pound. There was a little bit of haggling to be had, but eventually I did convince the previous owners that it was worth just handing it over because frankly they know and I know that it doesn't work anymore because Amstrad and whoever bought Amstrad, they shut off the system ages ago, probably over a decade ago. So um, hardware-wise, it's a TIO map 510 at 150 megs. So that's a dual-arm DSP core CPU that powers the unit and provides all of the uh, functionality in terms of its raw processing power. It's got 128 kilobytes of NOR flash, so that'll be the bootloader. That'll then load the Linux, which will be contained in the 32 megabytes of NAND flash. And it also has 32 megabytes of SD RAM. So that's loads of uh, memory in this. It's quite a beefy machine, really. There's also a 12-bit color LCD screen at 480 by 320, a USB host right there. You'll see it on the back. And a hardware 56K Connexent modem. And, of course, a built-in camera because it was technically a video conferencing unit. And what you'll notice here, which is quite cute, you've got this little keyboard here, little QWERTY keyboard, but tip it on its bum. Look at that. A one on a wire pops out, and that's something that you could probably actually type on. That's uh, pretty good. That's actually uh, removable, too. I'll show you that later. And then there's a docking station on the side. On the back, I'll show you, there's your telephone power and the USB host, an EXP, whatever that is. Apparently, you could also hook this up to some sort of printer via that USB. Oh, the keyboard wanted to show you it, uh, show, show itself off to you. There you go, look, four pins of goodness in there, four whole pins. So what I'm gonna do today with this video is I'm just gonna do a little brief overview of it because I, I don't think, I think it's it's so good um, that I, I don't want to rush it. I, mean, I think we ought to power it up in case we break it. So I've got a mess of wires with it, and I'll just untangle that. But while I'm untangling it, I just want to tell you a story. I saw these, God, it must have been nearly 20 years ago now when they started bringing these out. I'd have to sort of check on the uh, history of Amstrad. And I do remember when I was a student in Wales, and I saw these in curries, the local curries, and I thought... That's a jolly nice idea. And the, the model I saw was black and white, of course. These these fangled, modern fangled colour ones hadn't even been out. And I thought that's a jolly nice idea because it, you, you can just get on the, the phone line and you know it'll do everything. It's all self-contained. Don't need an ISP. That was back in the days when you had to have a, a dial-up ISP. Um, but then uh, I, I, I kind of thought they were a bit dear, to be honest. I can't remember what they hit the, uh, the streets at, but it would have probably been at least a hundred pounds for a phone. And um, I thought, nah, and I let it go. And I remember I would go into Curry's every week and uh, you can see the screen there, very dim at the moment. Maybe it just needs to warm up. And I uh, would see the prices of these things just getting lower and lower and lower. And then one day they disappeared altogether. So I missed my opportunity to own one. And ever since then, I've looked out on eBay and things like that. And they've always appeared to be way too expensive when I have seen them considering it's something that really doesn't have a purpose anymore, they seem to fetch their, you know, still retained a reasonable price. Um, and I think there might be a few of them around still because they're so heavily made. I, I tell you what, it's a heavy old phone, but the screen is rigid, everything's rigid. It's a really quality thing. It's, it's almost a shame, really, that Apple, Apple, <laughs> Amstrad, couldn't get two dissimilar companies, could you? Um, really went a bit overboard with the cost. So when you had to use them, it had to sort of connect several times a day to an internet service at like £1.50 a minute or something. You know, everything was expensive. So if you go through like here, I was looking at this, and you go, games, wow, look, all these games, arcade shoot em up arcade platform games, action adventure games, yada, yada, yada. Um, and I shall try, I'll try to sort of tilt this in a way you can see it. The screen does seem to get brighter after a while. I think it's just sort of, you know, some old cold cathode technology. So I'm actually going to try to squint in the camera because I can't see at this angle. So yeah, you've got Space Invaders, Star Wars, Silkworm, Missile Defense. And I heard that a lot of these were Spectrum games. They had like a Spectrum emulator. 
And then if I just choose a game, you can see there, 50p for four days play, or one pound for four weeks to download it, plus the local call rate. So, you know, okay, you have to pay for that, fine. So you're going to pay for a game, and you don't, you're only renting it, you don't even get to keep it on there. And then you sort of, the more you go through, the more you'll find everything like that. So if I do uh, services, I just push the I button, that brings up services. Um, ooh, adult. Um, adult services, yes, please. Um, parental lock. Press enter to succeed. Uh, okay, I've got to press enter on the main keyboard. There's no, there doesn't seem to be an enter on the little one. And there you go, you can see there, everything. £1.50 a minute, £1.50 a minute. I mean, okay, fair enough, that's the adult services, but even... Um, I don't even know what copy mail is. Ringtones, £1.50 a minute. Everything is just £1.50 a minute. So you, you can see that would soon start clocking up. If you go to here, like Google search, then it would try to load up this AmSurf internet, um, which I think was provided, the back end provided by Demon Internet. And obviously then it would just whir away and off it would go. Can't do anything now. One, I don't even have a phone line that I can connect this to in a convenient place. And two, I read that all of that's shut down anyway, so it doesn't matter. I mean, you could try to emulate the other end and then do this uh, uh, chap connection or whatever it needs and then talk to this, but it's not going to happen. Not in this lifetime. Nobody's going to put the effort in. There are the odd sort of projects on the go at the minute where, I say on the minute, last updated uh, 2006, where people have actually kind of got Linux on here because it is the TI OMAP 590 chipset, which is a sort of precursor to all the mobility chipsets. So they do, um, they will be very similar and it runs a, a version of MontaVista Linux. So it is totally, totally um, possible to get this to work um, with a sort of Linux. And there you go, that's the camera video call and you can see the uh, back office camera up there so it's sort of nice so let's have a little feel around of the unit itself so you can see here you've got all these buttons games directory inquiries internet services voicemail look it's got a nice red led when you turn on the old voicemail you can easily tell if it's on and off delete play oh there's some... i recall when i was playing with this earlier there might actually be some uh, messages on it and there are so look you could see it got a nice interface where it showed you all your sort of voicemails there in the sort of list and you could just say I guess if I click here you go oh let's try again no I was playing that you heard that there briefly let's have a listen Just a bit of breathing, that's the all it was. The other person has the cleared. Person has cleared. Thank you. What else have we got on there? So it's obviously got memory for remembering that. And look, I'm guessing this is the previous um, previous owner, Hilary Berger. Look, and this is all about her Facebooks. And look, they're all kind of unopened, really. So let's have a look through. Let's have a look through her email at admin because I, you know, I'm sure there's nothing too personal in that one. From Amsurf Limited and British Sky Broadcasting. Blah, blah, blah. About the reorganisation. As a result, all the rights to B Sky B. So this is obviously when Amstrad was sold to B Sky B. Oh, wow. Look at that. By continuing to use and pay for your service after this time will constitute acceptance of the change of service provider. If you do not want to continue to receive the email of services, then you can stop using your service at any time. Printly press the letter. Wow, just delete your account. That's it. Done. So yeah, you can see it's quite fast. Um, it, it is colour. It might not show up so well on the camera, but it is a colour interface. But look, it's bloody speedy. It, it's nice. I uh, actually think it's a very uh, usable platform, to be honest with you. I would love this to be... I, I would love a Raspberry Pi in this format. Can you imagine a Raspberry Pi? Oh, it's, it's sort of going through its whole setup again. Um, Oh, because the button right there on the screen, I don't know what that does. Compose message. Oh, I just got into the email composer. Let's forget about that. Um, because, yeah, this would be awesome as a desktop Raspberry Pi machine. So you could play your games. You've got your keyboard. You've got your little pop-out proper keyboard. Look at that. You could have your little touchpad going on in that. Um, make your phone calls. I think this would be really good. And you could have all your Skype calls on it as well. Answering machine. I think... 
This is far better than any kind of office phone that I've used in uh, recent times. So that would be, I think that would be great. Loads of weird buttons here that I don't quite understand. So home office mobile, mobile message, email. You've got to remember these things could do weird stuff like faxing and all sorts of crazy stuff. So I think some of these buttons could be to do with that. So the weird thing is you've got this QWERTY keyboard here, but I can't see an enter. That was a, an odd one. Um, I'll just show you the side here. It has a smart card, and I think the idea was that you could sort of buy some sort of services and possibly pay for them there. A docking station. If I recall, though, I thought there was some sort of little PDA that may have slipped in and out of some of these. And there's a mysterious panel. I don't think it would be a Teardown Lab video unless we actually at least opened up one panel. This is on. Um, which I sort of suspect is probably the uh, battery backup. No, it's not. Um, oh, is it the key? Oh, look, there you go. It's the wire for this two tad. Isn't that strange? That's the strain relief for the keyboard. So you could uh, adjust that. The weird thing is there's no sort of retractor mechanism. So when you try to put the keyboard back in, it sort of tends to jam up. So maybe uh, they ought to have just put a little spring in there and that would have been a lot more sensible. So that's a bit weak, Amstrad. You should have designed something better there. But I would like to... Um, someone told me that they've seen the keyboard off this um, on as a sort of Bluetooth keyboard so that someone's retasked the, the moulds and just sort of continue to make them. Anything on this other side? No, just a normal headphone, uh, headphone handset there and your host USB and your telephone line. So yeah, all in all, a neat little package. I keep trying to escape that old keyboard. It's not happy. Oh, look at that. You've even got a calculator in there, allegedly, but I, I don't know how. I've got it into demo mode now, and in demo mode, clearly it's going to stay forever. Oh, that's it. Hang on. Press stop to go back, and then it goes back into demo mode. Maybe because it hasn't found the phone line, it hasn't rang home, it's just going to sit there. So I was really gutted, though. I was gutted because I remember some of these had a Spectrum emulator, too, and I thought there just may be the opportunity to have a couple of little games on there and just sort of crack on and play a bit of uh, Spectrum, but that's not going to happen. So that's my E3 emailer. I'm not sure really what I'm going to do with it. I could do a teardown. What do you guys at home think I should do. If you're watching this on YouTube or you're watching this via Patreon, please uh, comment down below. Let me know. I'll let you decide. Um, say it's something that I've really wanted to have for many a years and now that I've got it, um, I can't do anything with it. So be really sad. If you've actually hacked one of these yourself and got Linux on it, if you uh, if you just let me know, I'd love to know that. If you can, if you've actually got all of a lot of these stuff, things working, then definitely I'll be trying to Linux it. I've definitely code up. I've worked on a very similar chipsets to this arm, so I could I could carry the mantle of that project if somebody uh, else is interested in helping me with it. As ever, guys, thank you for watching. <laughs>